China attacks the Philippines in the South China Sea. The Tiananmen Square massacre gets memory hold. And an American is finally allowed to leave China after four years. That and more on this week's China News Headlines. Uncensored, I'm Chris Chappell. This week's China News Headlines. But before we begin, in case you haven't heard, we now have China Uncensored merchandise. If you'd like to buy a t-shirt like this or some of our other great t-shirts and mugs, check out chinauncensored.tv slash merchandise. Get some cool stuff and support the show. And the best part is, none of it is made in China. Which is good because last week, China attacked two Philippine ships. Chinese Coast Guard vessels fired water cannons at the Philippine ships. They were on their way to resupply Marines from the Philippines who were stationed here at the Second Thomas Shoal. No one was hurt, but the Filipino troops were left blockaded. In 1999, during territorial disputes with China, the Philippines purposefully ran one of their naval ships aground in the shoal. And they've had a small number of Marines stationed on this rusty World War II era ship for the last 20 plus years. That is hardcore. Now, as we know, the Chinese Communist Party claims the entire South China Sea is Chinese territory, putting it at odds with all the surrounding countries. And yet, a few days after China's Coast Guard confronted Filipino ships, Chinese leader Xi Jinping told Southeast Asian leaders China is not a threat, and Beijing would not bully its smaller regional neighbors. Um, but the Philippines didn't take this lying down. They told China to back off. And to the Biden administration's credit, the U.S. State Department issued a strong statement standing with the Philippines and said an armed attack on Philippine ships in the South China Sea would invoke the U.S.-Philippines Mutual Defense Treaty. In other words, they told the Chinese regime to back off or the U.S. would get involved. And guess what? The Chinese Communist Party withdrew the blockade. And earlier this week, supply boats did finally reach the Filipino Marines. But obviously, China is becoming increasingly hostile. To deal with the security challenge, Japan and the U.S. have joined together to conduct their first anti-submarine drill in the South China Sea. Earlier this month, Japanese forces also conducted a bilateral training exercise with the Philippine Navy. That was just a few days before the Chinese Coast Guard attacked the Filipino ships. And coming up after the break, Hunter Biden's China deal. Welcome back. A lot of people inside China have never heard of the Tiananmen Square Massacre. That's because the Chinese Communist Party has simply erased it from the history books. They can just do that in China. Unfortunately for the Communist Party, Hong Kongers have kept the memory alive. But with a new draconian national security law in place, Hong Kong has been changing. The annual Tiananmen Vigil this year was banned. Later, a Hong Kong university ordered the removal of a statue called the Pillar of Shame, a memorial to those who died in the massacre. And a Tiananmen Square Massacre Museum was shut down. But the problem is, students in Hong Kong could still learn about the massacre in school. Well, not for much longer. According to Hong Kong Free Press, Hong Kong libraries have been purging books about the Tiananmen Massacre. And in other signs of how things are going in Hong Kong, this week, a man was sentenced to over two years in jail for throwing a water bottle at police during a 2019 protest. Which is crazy but not as crazy as the 20-year-old Hong Kong activist who was sentenced to almost four years in jail for secession and one count of money laundering. The secession was because he was part of a pro-independent student organization. And the money laundering was because he set up related social media pages and used them to collect money for the cause through PayPal. And earlier this month, Hong Kong authorities sentenced Hong Kong's Captain America protester to nearly six years in prison. Was it for copyright infringement? No. 
it was because he chanted a banned slogan and promoted independence from China. And I'm particularly upset about this, because when I ran into him in Hong Kong two years ago, I remember thinking, I should get a photo with him. Now nah, I'll do it later. And now I'll have to wait six years. The Biden administration is warning of a battery war with China. China currently dominates the global supply of cobalt, and the administration warns China might use that to disrupt the American push toward electric vehicles by squeezing out U.S. manufacturers. Wow, that's pretty serious. China controlling metals like cobalt could have a huge impact on the daily lives of Americans. And it turns out that President Biden's son helped China get that stranglehold on cobalt. That's right. Hunter Biden was part owner of a venture involved in the $3.8 billion purchase by a Chinese conglomerate of one of the world's largest cobalt deposits. The deal happened back when Joe Biden was finishing up his time as vice president. A White House spokesperson said the president wasn't aware of the deal at the time. I think this is great. Hunter Biden has given his father a tough problem to solve. After all, it's important to keep an older mind active. Oil prices are skyrocketing worldwide, which is also affecting gas prices here in the U.S. We did an episode about it on our other channel, America Uncovered. Yeah, we have another show if you didn't know. But the Biden administration has a solution. The White House said the Department of Energy will release 50 million barrels of oil held in U.S. reserves. Great! That will bring some much-needed relief to Americans paying insane gas prices. That is, it would be, except the U.S. isn't just releasing it, they're selling it. And much of it will end up in China and India because that's who's buying it. You see, the oil is what's called sour crude. It has a high sulfur content, and the U.S. has loads of environmental regulations that strictly limit sulfur and fuel. But China and India don't have that problem. So some of the U.S. Strategic Petroleum Reserve will go to help China. It's so stupid, you'd almost think Hunter Biden was the one who suggested it. And after the break, China is accusing the U.S. of making a big mistake. Welcome back. I've talked before about how the media tends to frame everything in terms of whether it angers China. Well. Nothing angers China more than other countries supporting Taiwan. And there was a lot of anger this week. China downgrades Lithuania ties in anger at new Taiwan office. China protests passage of U.S. destroyer through Taiwan Strait. And the big one, U.S. invites Taiwan to its democracy summit. China angered. Sounds like the Chinese Communist Party needs some anger management classes. President Biden is having the first ever summit for democracy. And China is not invited. Taiwan is. So China is all upset and is accusing the U.S. of making a mistake. After all, the CCP says there's only one China, and Taiwan is part of that one China. Look, I think Xi Jinping is just upset he didn't get invited. You might think it doesn't make sense for the world's largest authoritarian regime to be at the Summit for Democracy, but that's where you're wrong. Because China has the best democracy, according to Xi Jinping. Xi Jinping doesn't even want to go to America's stupid democracy summit, because China is a much better democracy than the U.S. will ever be. So there. I expect a Wall Street CEO to say the same thing any day now. Someone like Ray Dalio, the founder of Bridgewater. Bridgewater has just raised $1.25 billion for its largest China fund. Dalio once wrote an op-ed against anti-China bias, in which he defended China's state surveillance and their treatment of Uyghurs. I think it's time we ask ourselves as a country, are we really doing enough to help the Chinese Communist Party? We need to do more. Like, we should really buy more China stocks, according to BlackRock. Speaking of Wall Street groveling to China, the CEO of JP Morgan says he regrets joking about the Chinese Communist Party. Oh no, I wonder if he angered China. 
So what was the joke? The Communist Party is celebrating its 100th year. So is JP Morgan. And I'll make a bet we last longer. I can't say that in China. They probably are listening anyway. Turns out that wasn't a very good joke because China was listening. After four years, an American citizen, Daniel Xu, has finally been allowed to leave China. He wasn't even charged with a crime. They just wouldn't let him leave. Xu told the AP he had been effectively held hostage by Chinese authorities seeking to convince his father to return to China and face justice for allegedly embezzling roughly $63,000 over 20 years ago. Meanwhile, Xu's father said he is innocent and the target of a political vendetta. Well, it is China, so that's completely plausible. So why did China finally release this innocent American? Well, it was part of the recent virtual meeting between Xi and Biden. In exchange for one innocent American, Biden would return seven Chinese nationals who were convicted of crimes in the U.S. But speaking of missing people, China's birth rate has plummeted to the lowest in decades. That's right, even lower than during the one-child policy. You know, forced abortions and forced sterilizations. So this sounds pretty bad. But Good news! Just at a moment of crisis, China just happened to find 12 million children it didn't know existed. Although these children were born between 2000 and 2010, so a lot of them are actually adults now, but where did all these kids come from? The difference could be the result of some parents failing to register births to avoid punishment if they breached the one-child policy. That's a fairly drastic move, because if you don't register your kid, they won't get identity papers. They can't go to school. They can't get a good job. Effectively, they become like an illegal immigrant in their own country. On the other hand, if you do register your kid and you violated the one-child policy, you could face fines that are more than your annual salary, or your kid could be taken away from you and put in an orphanage to be sold to well-meaning foreigners or even worse. Yeah, maybe hide your kids from the state. And this week marks the 20-year anniversary of a pretty baller protest against the Chinese regime. On November 20th, 2001, 36 Falun Gong practitioners from around the world traveled to Tiananmen Square to protest against the persecution of the practice inside China. It ended about how you'd expect, with everyone getting arrested. But they were all foreigners, which means none of them had their organs harvested. And now it's time for me to answer a question from a member of the China Uncensored 50 Cent Army. Fans who support the show on the crowdfunding website Patreon or the community subscription platform Locals. Song Mom 8 asks on Locals, In the opening credits, you put a flag on a piece of rock in the middle of the ocean. What does it say? I can't tell if it's China or Chris. Lol. Ah, great question for an episode about so much of the troubles in the South China Sea. So this footage is of me on the Scarborough Shoal, more disputed territory in the South China Sea. China and the Philippines both claim it, and they're both wrong. Because as you can see, I planted the China uncensored flag on the shoal. It belongs to me. If you want to see more of our epic 57-hour trip to the Scarborough Shoal on a Filipino fishing boat? Check out the episode here. Thanks for your question and your support, Song Mom 8 And thank you to everyone who supports China Uncensored on Patreon or Locals. It's not easy to expose the Chinese Communist Party, and we could not do it without your support. So help support the show by contributing on Patreon or Locals. You'll get some cool perks, including having me answer your question on the show. Or you could get some of our new merchandise over at ChinaUncensored.tv slash merchandise. Links to everything are in the description below. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. See you next time.